How are we all not? Hi guys, hello, welcome, good and tag. We're here today to brew an outstanding coffee. This month's masterpiece is really amazing, is really outstanding. Trust me, you're gonna have the best enjoyment of your life. So, so the name is El Buru. <laughs> from El Buru Geisa from Panama. Yes. From La Mas Family Estates. This coffee is really outstanding this year. It's even sweeter than, than last year. And it made us chose it because it's really outstanding. Yeah. Like lemongrass, it's amazing guys. You're gonna have a great experience. We're gonna start straight with the brewing and So we use 96 degrees water and our recipe is pretty simple. 15 grams of coffee, a nice bloom at 50 grams. It already smells amazing guys. Can I, can I try? Absolutely. Oh yeah, super floral. Mm, getting you there. Jasmine, background in the background. So you do 30 seconds of blooming. 30 seconds of blooming, 50, 50 grams, grams of water. water. Oh, you nailed it. Mm -hmm. Very good. So when I see 29, I start. Start always from the center and then circular motion. And I stop at 120 grams my second pull. Okay. Please tell me what so, to do. When okay. you see 59, please start from the center and okay. then circular motion and reach to 180. Excellent. 59? Yeah. That's now. Okay, let's do it. Perfect. One, two. 180? 180. 80. That's it. Thank you very That's much. Nice. Very cool. So, how many grams of coffee did you put in? 15 grams, 250 grams in total. We divided it in four pools. It's super similar to our recipe that we use in all our cafes, but because we always think about you, we downgrade the bit the dose so you can have more coffee at home. Tell me what to do. I feel at like 130, we're going to 250, and that's it, guys. That's it, that's very simple. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Keep it simple, eh? Did you say 250 or 220? 250. Oh. That's it. Yes. So this goes really fast, right? Mm -hmm. Is that, are you sometimes going slower or faster? Or is this, are you always trying to hit like 2 to 20 to 30? Always depends on the coffee. Now this is a ghost coffee, it's a dense coffee. We want to extract the sweetness, so we want to reach the 2 minutes 40 mark, ideally. Cool, cool, cool. Nice. And so this is going down really, really nicely, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So cool. We're using the ceramic uh, V60 because we want to highlight this amazing acidity of this coffee, like lemongrass and all the citric flavors really shine through yeah. from hot to cold. And as it gets cooled down, this coffee, peaches pop up out of nowhere, yeah. it has a bergamot finish. It's really amazing, guys. Yeah. So in the masterpiece, I'm not sure if you can hear me, but Ilona will tell me. Yes. In the masterpiece, we are featuring natural process, anaerobic process. This is a wash process geisha. So super clean flavors. We really wanted to present something clean and on the spot geisha experience for you. But we chose this one from El Buro, which is from the Lamastos estate. There's also a leader. And then the people say, a leader is so much more famous. And so we said like, okay, let's go blind. Let's have a cupping table and then let the coffee speak to us. And then we find the one really that is standing out. And that was El Buro washed here. And the flavors are absolutely fantastic. So we will roast this next week. Absolutely. So this is kind of like a sample roast that you're mm -hmm. using here, right? Mm -hmm. Cool. And it's already amazing, guys. Nice. Shall we try this? This you brewed earlier. Yeah, just before we start. Okay, cool, cool. So, amazing. You do this one, I do that one. Can we have a couple of glasses or two more cups, please? Quickly? Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Very good. So, this is the pop. Which one is which? This is the pop. No, this is the hot version. This is the cold version. So, Coco, amazing, thank you so much. Wow, thank one, two, one, one, that's easier than two, one, one, right? Mm. So I didn't want to mix my cup with your, oh, can we say fucking amazing? I'm not sure, but this is like fucking amazing, okay? It's, it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It's super light, okay? Mm -hmm. Almost champagne-y, mm -hmm. sorbet, I can, can see where this comes from. 
Like a pink lemonade, can we say that? Absolutely, I think you can. Wow, mm. really so much happening here in the background. Hi guys. And um, is that gooseberry in the finish or what's the stuff for tea? It's, it's sweet so much, gravy somehow, <laughs> but it's a nice sweetness and the bergamot finish is like outstanding. Yes. Mm. This one is cooled now. Mm -hmm. Did you try the cool one? Yeah. Wow. This now, the body is going out. The sweetness is really jumping up. We get peach nose. I, oh I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Peach apricot. It's like super delicate, guys. Probably I don't. You're gonna love this one. I don't eat star fruit so often, but whenever I am in some country and I bite into a star fruit, it's always like. Oh, what is happening here in my mouth? Like this is sweetness. Where are the flavors? And then suddenly the flavors are coming in, and I have that finish from the star fruit in here. So cool. So this is a really really easy method. So guys, when you are receiving the some visitors, <laughs> when you're when you're receiving. Um, the masterpiece next week with the masterpiece subscription. You know what to do. I need more of this for sure. So we printed the roast curve here. Yeah, I just wanted to take you through this. Can you can you see this? So this is like a roast curve that we would apply for a geisha bean. Okay, we are roasting on a UG22. So that's a 25 kilogram. Yeah. Used to be 22 kilos. It's the beautiful machine here in the background that you can see behind the Terra Penta boxes. Okay. Uh, beautiful machine, retro model made by Probat, of course. We love Probat, didn't say that. Um, we are only loading 12 kilos, so it's mm -hmm. less than 20% of the roast capacity. That gives us a lot of space in the drum to really speed up and do like a, a little bit more racy roast, okay? Which is what we want for something very complex where we want to bring out floral knots. And we have tons and tons of floral knots here. We are charging at 190 degrees. This is Celsius, people, okay, Celsius. <laughs> we are loading here, and then we have the soak, and the soak goes up for one minute, and we are dropping to 74 degrees here, okay? This is when the room temperature green bean takes on the temperature of the roast machine, okay? And then we go straight in what we say, the drying phase. Here at the bottom, you see also the faces with the gas changes here. So when the soak is done, we are increasing our gas by to 55%, okay? So we go like straight in with 55% of gas to give this rice right here a really, really nice and steady, steady line, okay? Mm -hmm. The soak is so important for us because it's setting the scene for the coming roast. What we really want is like a steady rate of rice here throughout the drying phase, which usually goes up until four minutes, for four minutes and a half. And then we start developing the bean, okay? We call it the Maillard phase, when we are developing the sugars and things like that. This is really most important. But the Maillard only works if the soak and the drying phase were set in the correct way, so we're really setting the, uh, the, the, the scene for a beautiful play, if you want to compare it with acting, okay? So we're going up here, you see the total roast time was just shy of nine minutes, and then included in that we have one minute and 15, so that's 75 seconds, we call it crack out time. Now they say development time, which is I think the wrong term because the development starts way before, but when the bean cracks for the first time and releases energy, we slightly give it another 75 seconds here and a little bit more of temperature. As you can see, the end temperature here was 196, 197. What we are looking for is like a very, very even outside. As you know, we don't burn our beans because we appreciate the flavors and we have so much flavor to give. We always develop from the inside, never from the outside. So whenever you see a dark roasted coffee, it's not so good for your stomach. We also don't eat burnt toast. We don't want to eat burnt, um, burnt and Anna's doing hearts there. I can see that I'm shaking already. Where's my coffee? Can I have a little bit more? So we have the crack out time here. Um, and so that gives us a total loss time, uh, like I said before, of nine minutes, which in our case is, is a very short, short time. And we can do that because we were underloading the roast by 50%. Probat allows us to do that. So here you can see the rate of rise, you see the temperature, the gas changes, and also the airflow. 
this for us would be a perfect scenario. A um, couple of things to add. The moist level of this geisha bean is 10.5%, okay? For us, it's perfect. We want to be between 10 and 11%. If it's way over 12, it's kind of shimmelish. How do we say that? It starts um, molding, so to speak, okay? Then it wasn't dried correctly. If it's below 9, it's too dry for us, okay? The geisha bean is a big bean, and so the geisha bean has lower density, it's softer inside, and that also um, is a very important fact for us to see like how racy can we go into that bean. A soft bean you can imagine you don't want to give like 80% of uh, it would uh, 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 torch, yeah. you, would, uh, you would burn the beans and then also it would dry too quickly and then you wouldn't have this beautiful cup here. Look at that, my Akme Tajimi cup, amazing. This is a blue surface, do you have a white surface? Yeah. Maybe? Absolutely amazing. We recommend to drink from a teacup if you have or a glass and really to treat it more like for us it's a tea ceremony really what we're doing here. So we have all these delicate flavors and please let it cool. We all want to slow down from a hectic world. Let the coffee talk to you and take your time. Don't punch it with any whatever milk, sugar, thingies, um, tea leaf or um, uh, peppermint twist or something. This, the purest coffee, yes. do it as nature wanted it to be. Just coffee in its best form. In its best form. It's a ritual. It's a ritual. You just uh, sit down, cool down, and enjoy the coffee. This doesn't need anything to make it look pretty. You know, there's no makeup on here. It just speaks. Oh my God, this is oh. insane. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just a quick one on acidity. Yeah? Acidity is a good thing. Okay, coffee is a fruit. We all know by now, but acidity really carries. It makes the flavor shine. Thank you. Makes the flavor shine. It makes the flavor shine. It it's it's like butter in uh, baking. Okay, uh, it brings flavor to the cookie, or um, it's like fat on the meat. You know. You want to have that, it all carries flavor. So we need the acidity, not only for the flavor, but it also gives, gives our cup depth and structure. So here something really wonderful is happening. It's the body and the acidity yeah, is moving in my mouth. Like it's mm -hmm. such an organic product. It's absolutely stunning. So please, 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 if you have this masterpiece geisha El Buru Wash from La Master's Estate mm -hmm. in Panama, highest elevation of the Baru Volcano, by the way, it's in the national uh, park. It's a national park, yeah, right? Part of the park that this coffee comes from, it's in the national park. It's super close to the volcano. Volcanic soil creates all this. Nutrition, nutrition, okay? Nutrition, exactly. What goes into the plant, goes into the cherry, goes into this coffee, mm -hmm. and all we have Slow to... maturation, slow it's maturation. Super sweet. Cold at night, hot during the yeah. day, so I get a very eccentric if you mm -hmm. want to have another word for complex yeah. flavor profile here so we used to say i'm not sure if we can still say so but our little diva here <laughs> can sing really really yeah. well yeah and we need to treat her well and take our time with her to get the best performance out of her so please guys when you're signing up for this masterpiece subscription for next week's roast and you receive this 150 gram of this like super high scoring geisha, mm -hmm. 15 grams, 10 brews, don't waste the bean. Yeah, exactly right? guys, you know, 18 clicks. 18 don't forget. clicks, don't forget. Start there, it worked really, really well. Do you want to say something about the water if someone is in another region? The softer the water, the better. If you don't have access to your filtration system, please go with the lowest uh, mineral content in uh, bottled water in your local supermarket. Like and Volvic. Have, Volvic is a great example if you have it at the nearby. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. So, water is 95% of the coffee, so water is quite, uh, we can do a whole session on water, of course, <laughs> and then also, uh, 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 we have a Maxwell who wrote a book about it uh, a couple of years yeah. ago, <coughs> five years ago now. So the chemistry of water, really, really interesting. Take care of the water, have fresh beans, look for something exciting, you know. And grind fresh, please. Grind size, and then super easy to replicate. Do you want to do it on ice? Like, do you recommend it on ice? Absolutely. Absolutely, guys. I tried it this morning to be fair. Uh -huh. Sorry. Not yeah. sharing with me. 
But so, so you have 15 brews, okay? At least one on ice. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. totally worth it. If you are summer, wherever you are now, you have to do it. 120 grams of ice, 18 grams of coffee this time, 200 grams of total water. Similar grind size, that's it. So the total water is like 320 when it all melts. Yeah, yeah. When you want to drink it, of nice. course, you will drink nice. it before. Super refreshing. It almost tastes like a lemon. Ice yeah. So, any more questions? So why did you choose V60 as a method and nothing else? So, How? perfect, perfect. We wanted with this coffee to highlight the acidity exactly because it's something really special. Trust me, when you taste this coffee, you're gonna understand what I'm talking about. Just because we want to highlight the acidity, we chose V60 and specifically the ceramic version to highlight it even more. It gives us full clarity of flavors and with this amazing outstanding acidity and the amazing sweetness also that's combined there, we created something really unique. Yeah. If I can add from, because V6 is also my favorite method, you have a full filtration here, so not, no fines are passing by like in an AeroPress or some other form. I imagine a, a, a French press, and I think I wouldn't do that mm -hmm. if, if you must, but I would really recommend to use full paper fil uh, filter paper. The Japanese paper we really like, it's a little has a better um, uh, flow rate and, and also that lets through more of the oils. Uh, if you compare the 360 paper to the Chemex, Chemex is a lot thicker, you will need to close a little bit. Here, we really, it's like a, such a playful thing and because we also need some attention to this concentric or centric pouring that we're having, uh, we really feel like there's more delicacy coming out in that cup, right? And you need the oils in this brew, I would also say, to transport all this like super super complex labor profile. Check, check, try again to take so you. Sorry, I wish you could try. There's no much left to be fair. We have another question. Yes. Do yeah. you grind on EK forty three and what's the grind size? Mm. So EK forty three from EK forty three differs a lot. So if your grinder is truly calibrated and very nice. I will just give a number now, this doesn't mean that it's specific, but around 11, probably it will work, probably. So we have to say the EKA, you can of course calibrate yourself, yeah. I mean it's an 11 for us, it doesn't really mean it's an 11 for you, it could be 9 or 13, yeah. it really depends, first of all, which grinder you have, do you have Turkish or, or uh, yeah, the other ones? Do you have the filter bears, do you have uh, other bears, and the other bears? But then also you can reset it. So we would really, really recommend, and this is not like a TV marketing show, but we are huge fans of Commandant. Yeah. It has to be said, we can't, we can't lie. Yeah, we are huge fans. 18 clicks here, and then uh, maybe, which probably would help, what we can do, we grind for you on 18 clicks, and then we put the 18 clicks next to 22 and next to 26. And then you can see at least the difference in the brine setting. And then I, yeah. I would say, look at the flow rate and go for the two minutes forty-five, right? Yeah. yeah. If you don't, if it that, stops at two minutes forty, you're perfect. There's yeah. nothing but that. That's it. Another question: Do you recommend any non-paper filters? Any? Any non-paper filters? Metal filters and so on. So I would just simply tell you that we try it this way and it works perfect. So I wouldn't experiment with this coffee. It's outstanding, it's amazing, the most delicate coffee we had for a long time. Yeah. So for me, go by that. For me, metal, of course, um, you don't throw away paper. Mm -hmm. It's maybe more sustainable, the proof is that put in, of course. We don't know how they produce the metal filters. I never looked into that. For me, when I look at I like to t have my organic product, if you look at this coffee bed here, it's perfect, okay? Just touch it <laughs> and smell it. It's absolutely stunning. By the way, very, very good organic um, for the garden um, yeah, uh, fertilizer, compost. yeah, compost. Mm -hmm. um, my organic product is touching an organic product, okay? For me, that makes a difference. And having this um, structure of the cell, cell, cell cellulose, yeah, mm -hmm. um, really makes a difference in like how many coffee oils are passing through this filter. On a metal, you can imagine it's, I think it's self-explanatory, right? Mm -hmm. It's just passing through. Yeah. I, 
For me, for me, it's in my head. I get a metallic taste out of it, but I'm sorry, you know, I'm kind of old fashioned. But I really prefer organic metal on organic metal. Yeah, mm -hmm. linen is good. We used to do the wood neck with the linen, but then how do you clean it from the from a, like you have an anaerobic coffee, and how do you clean that taste out of the lin, uh, the linen cloth? Yeah. You know, but that used to be my fa absolute favorite favorite methods. But then you maybe just stick to the Gesher coffees all the time. Mm -hmm. you can. Another one, question. One last question. Yeah. Would you compare please B60 with Mocha Master? Wow. I read So, the good thing with Mocha Master is that it sprays the water simply in the center. So, you can't grind fine with this coffee because you want the sweetness. So, I would truly try it there. That's an easy yes for me. Okay, so. Sorry, yeah. I talk too much yeah. but, uh, and with my hands, but uh, let's me. So, if you put in great coffee, great coffee will come out. That's rule number one. So mm -hmm. don't discriminate mm -hmm. any brewing methods, okay? Even the French press, it sounded a little bit negative earlier. If someone loves the French press, mm -hmm. do the French press. All we ask is buy great coffee. Yeah. And then there will also be like a great coffee experience. But I also feel like that different people have different preferences. Yes, but I would say our coffee tastes good on a mocha master. Mm -hmm. But you only have 150 grams, so 80 grams for one liter on the coffee mm -hmm. mocha master. I would say like go bit by bit yeah. and have Just stretch enjoy it. And join, join us in the ritual. It's a ritual. Prepare your coffee by hand. It's amazing. Nothing more rewarding, rewarding than that, guys. How you doing? How do you brew in the morning? Come at home and I prepare my brew. Then I go to work. Okay. I do the same. I got stuck with the E60. It's my morning ritual, and I just so really easy. I put the water first while I'm grinding, and I'm, yeah. I'm very good at grinding. I once won the grinding E20. Nice. nice. Maybe too soon. <laughs> so, and I think like if you want a little tip for the grinding, if you want to grind a little bit faster. Hold this steady, Sorry, okay, yeah. when you're grinding. Don't do this, okay? Yeah. So if you hold this steady, then of course my mass up mm -hmm. here will have a steady flow rate to the bottom and hits the grinder. And I would say like you're cutting on 30% of the time, okay? Mm -hmm. Ilona, next time we brew in the office, okay? Ilona is filming <laughs> here. We do that. So for me, like I'm grinding while the water is boiling and then I'm getting ready. I'm really taking the smell in, you know? And that five minutes, max. Get an amazing coffee. Cool. So I think like if there is no further question, we want to wrap up. The video will be on YouTube, of course. Mm -hmm. Ilona, do you have a video? Okay. Yeah. YouTube. We do a little blog, Anna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, we do a little blog. Recipes, screenshots, and off you go. Enjoy the masterpiece. Yeah, so nice. how, how do you do this? Swipe up for <laughs> masterpiece Swipe subscriptions. Up. <laughs> for the masterpiece subscription. So we are sending out the coffee, uh, we're roasting one or two batches, first week of each month, and you get uh, one bag of coffee, this extraordinary coffee, this exquisite rarity, yeah. like El Budo Ge 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 Geisha washed, uh, that you should not miss uh, once in a month. Yeah. So do yourself a little treat. Um, I think this is the best, really the best of the best that you can get from us. And we love making and saving coffee, guys. Ciao. Ciao. Cheers.